Episode 5 of The Walking Dead Season 1 is titled Wildfire, and uh, before I get into this slow-ass episode, let me talk up some things I missed in the last episode, Vatos, which I forgot to mention. One, the actor who played uh, uh, Guillermo, I have to, f- I felt bad <laughs> watching it, there was one part where when he says he's the custodian, oh, that poor actor, you could tell how he just regretted having to say that line. Like, oh, I'm the... Like, it's so... I don't know. That's something. Another thing, Ed... Um, we saw Ed uh, P- uh, Peltier, or Peltier, however you pronounce it, uh, Carol's husband, all fucked up in a tent, and um, he grabbed his daughters and says, why don't you stay with me? So that's the child molestation thing you can think, like, maybe he tried to before or something, and Carol, like, took her away, and he's like, no. And he's like, the hell would you then? He died also in the last episode. So those are two things that I missed to mention in the last episode of Vatos. But this episode, boring as hell. Nothing really happens in this except for the fact that... Oh, one more thing I forgot. In the last episode, uh, it ended with Jim saying, now I remember why I dug those graves. So I remember when I originally watched that episode, when it first aired, that I was like, oh shit, is this guy going to be like some sort of psychic or something? And... Th- rewatching it and thinking about it now, I'm like, shit, why don't they have, like, some episode where, like, there's a person there that, I know it doesn't make any sense, but, like, there's a person there that sees Rick or something later on, a new new person, and he's, he's like, who's Lori? <laughs> As he, like, she can communicate with the dead or some shit. I know, it's a totally different episode, or a totally different series or whatever, but that'd be interesting. Now to this episode. Nothing happens except you discover that Jim was bit. I don't know why this happened, uh, I thought his character had was going somewhere like interesting with the last episode at least and the psychic thing or you know ha- him having visions also again I forgot this in the last episode you discover how he survived was that he let the walkers eat his family and then he got to escape so that was interesting and it was he was somewhat of an interesting character to, in the last two episodes a minor character you know somebody we were introduced to that was more interesting than T-Dog and uh, these other people but yeah so in this episode, we pretty much nothing happens. Andrea's dealing with Amy's death, waiting for her to turn so she can kill her, and everybody's worried about all these walkers, or uh, uh, about Jim and Amy about to turn into walkers, and it's not safe because the walkers uh, presented um, even one walker back then presented much more fear and anxiety than they do now in the show. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so Amy turns, Andrea kills her. Andrea's kind of lost hope in humanity and hope in everything. And, like, just depressed and wants to kill herself or wants to die in general, you can tell. We also get to see Carol and Daryl's first in- interactions with each other. Daryl's destroying the heads of everybody that was bit and died. All the people that are a- capable of b- returning as a walker. And um, Carol comes over. She goes, I'll do it. That's my husband. She takes the pickaxe and she just starts wailing on his face. And... Daryl can kind of see something there, that there's something there that will be more developed in later on seasons. So, that was that was a little interesting. If you just watched it, you wouldn't really catch it. That's something the actor actually did, Norman Reedus did himself, I would assume, because you could actually tell in that scene that he can kind of relate to her, but we'll talk about that later on. Um, Rick comes up with this idea that he heard the CDC was still open and that maybe they should go over there to see if anybody's there and um, Shane wants to go to Fort Benning I think but they decide to go with Rick's the, uh, idea and go see if the C- if anyone's at the CDC that can help them so but everybody goes except for the Spanish family they decide to go their own way and we never know what happened to them I, I remember somebody said oh we heard that on, uh, I think in season 2 the guys from Philadelphia mention how uh, the kid that plays Bugsy Siegel in Boardwalk Empire. He, I forgot, he played the character that knew Maggie in season two. And uh, he says, I think it is a line, he says that we met a, uh, a husband and wife and two daughters. I'm not sure if she had, if they had two daughters or a boy and a girl. But I think it was supposed to be like them, Spanish family, and that they raped the girls or some shit. I don't know. And that's when Rick's like, oh, no, we got to kill this bastard. He's like, no, I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. I, I, I. That kid's also in Rescue Me. He's a good actor. He should be in more, more, he should get more work. But um, he's, anyway, 
Yeah, so um, I don't know what happened to that, that guy. I forgot his name, but he was also a relevant character for the first season, too, and he just disappears. Then we get introduced to Dr. Jenner, who's in the CDC. He's the only person there, we discover from this episode, you know, half of it's with him. Uh, well, not half, maybe like ten minutes is with him and testing and all this stuff, and then he loses a sample. We don't know if that sample had the cure, and that's why he's depressed in the next episode or not. But there's a sample there that is destroyed, and the whole room is destroyed. So then I th- I'm pretty sure that there was something there that they didn't talk about at all or develop or st- you know go further into detail on. That there was something in that room that was destroyed. I think he mentions there was a sample or something. That, I don't know. I remember. But it, all his work is gone. So And he's not even the smartest guy. So we can't assume that there is no hope anywhere else in the world. Because one guy that worked for the CDC, who wasn't the smartest, his wife was the smartest, uh, says that. But yeah, this the, the episode ends with the crew getting to the CDC, come fighting outside. They're worried because the walkers are going to come, even though there's no walkers around. They're scared that they might attack them. And uh, the camera moves down. Rick begs the guy, please, oh, you're killing us. You're killing us. And then the door opens. It's like uh, from Quantum Leap when... Al opens the imaging chamber. You see just a white door opening, lifting open. And then uh, they walk inside and the episode ends like that. All in all, it was a pretty boring episode. Oh, another thing. Dale. Didn't like, don't like pacifists. I really don't. So Dale in this episode, um, he, I don't know. He sees <laughs> Shane like, in the woods, like Shane's like pointing at Rick. Like, you know, I can just take this fucker out and I'll be the leader again. Because they got to they think about that too. Shane was the leader and then Rick comes back and Rick's the leader and Rick's like we're going to the CDC he's like no I think we should go to Fort Bend no we're going to the CDC and uh but you know they like partners and just like the episode where Daryl was about to beat the shit out of Rick you know Rick looks every time looks at Shane Shane knows what Rick's thinking and they go they're a team partners you know so but the, Shane is like nah I'm not having it bro like I was the leader I, su- I took care of these people now you're coming along you come along, you ruin everything. Walkers come to our camp, start killing people. Who knows how long we could have stayed here? You know? Uh, they didn't mention that, but, I mean, technically, it's true. I mean, you know, Rick's always leaving. I'll never leave. I'll never leave. Let's go. We gotta leave. <laughs> but, I don't know. Uh, this episode was just, you know, there's nothing good. Uh, Jim dies, or he's turning, and they don't want to kill him. And they said we should decide, you know, what he wants to do. And uh, they let him drop him off on the side of the road <laughs> like garbage and just let him fucking die a turn. And Rick's like, you want this gun? He's like, no, I want to see my family. I don't think you know what you're saying. Your family's dead. No, I know. I'm going to meet up with them when I'm a zombie. But, um, yeah, whatever episode. Let me know what you guys thought about this episode, Wildfire. I don't know why it's called Wildfire. Maybe because... That Jenner says something about like how it spreads like wildfire. I don't know. I don't remember. I really can't remember. But um, yeah, mediocre episode in my opinion. This well, we'll talk about the next one later. And anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this episode down below. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.